Um, all right, I'm going to probably throw a lot of information at you all very uh, quickly. Um, but first, I am very grateful for being here and be able to share ISAFI with you all. So ISAFI, um, and Russell's on with me today, so he can always um, contribute if he if I'm leaving anything out. Um, and I'm, I'm, I'm not a music therapist as well, just to let you guys know. So I'm going to be quite quiet today, uncharacteristically, as you probably know, Erin. <laughs> yes, yes. Well, um, speaking on behalf of Russell and um, Edward, they are the founders of ISAFI, and they, um, in 2018, essentially conceived this idea of building an app um, in response to both of their sons dealing with personal mental health um, challenges. And they noticed that um, both of their children were utilizing music playlists as a main part of their coping mechanism, um, but that the music was not always helpful um, and actually was causing quite a lot of rumination and um, exacerbation of those mental health crises. So since 2018, um, Russell and Edward have both um, really engaged a lot of people um, from a varying specialties. And so you'll see, um, this is kind of the ISOFI team so far. And we have anywhere from um, you know, our founders to having people who are experts and clinicians within the mental health arena as well as engaging um, people who are technical specialists and having um, consultants and partners in that um, area. And then people focused on like brand and design and like customer experience, um, as well as people engaged in the music industry. Um, and I will say kind of one of my favorite parts so far is that this is quite an international group of people. Um, so it's really awesome to be engaged and connect with people all across the world. Makes um, scheduling meetings very challenging as far as time zones go, um, but otherwise enjoyable. Yeah, Erin does a lot of early mornings, which is quite interesting. Or, or, or if it's with, if we, if we are called with Australia, I'm in my pajamas at midnight. So <laughs> literally. <laughs> exactly. So we've um, kind of identified um, a, a variety of um, problems um, per se that we're kind of utilizing as our as our focus um, for ISOFI. And so kind of based off of um, Katrina McFerrin's Healthy Unhealthy Music Scale, um, we're really kind of focusing on help, um, kind of people who are using music, um, music listening within that you know, quote unquote, unhealthy way, um, kind of identifying ways we can combat that rumination, especially the rumination that um, can be further exacerbated by music streaming services like Spotify when they recommend that you listen to a specific track based off of something else that you're listening to. Um, and then um, we recognize that within music therapy, when we are working with clients um, with reflective music listening techniques, um, and maybe we've identified that we want to look at music playlists, um, creating something very intentional um, within that music therapy focus can be a really lengthy and complex process. Um, and I know in my personal experience, um, I found that it I'm very much limited by like my own knowledge of specific artists and genres. And um, there's just so much more music out there than I'm familiar with. This is very hard to present when I'm on one desktop monitor. Oh my goodness gracious. Okay, so ISOFI is looking at ways of helping specifically music therapists as well as our clients um, for a few different um, strategies. And all of these strategies are based off of um, music therapy, music therapist feedback, as well as music therapy evidence-based um, techniques and research. And so ISOFI is looking at bringing specifically um, Gen Z. We know that um, this is something that can be addressed across the lifespan, but for now, we're really looking at um, the Gen Z population and kind of bringing them together with music therapists in a way that's very accessible. 
looking at creating um, intentional personalized playlists um, in a quick manner based on a client's preferred music um, and their preferred music that lists that lives within streaming services. This is meant to be uh, an additional tool for music therapists that complements the live music making experience, um, but provides another opportunity to have reflective listening techniques that are accessible even outside of the music therapy session. There's a component of being able to offer journaling um, of a client's mood or emotional data that's based on their music listening experience, and they'll have the ability to share that um, information with their therapist. And all the while, um, ISOFI is developing machine learning models to help generate algorithms that identify mental health situations within music and lyrics in order to help improve that track selection overall. So how does ISOFI work? I will show you a demonstration. <laughs> the very generic examples of how I might utilize Spicify within um, a clinical scenario is that um, let's say I'm working with a client who has identified that they experience a low mood state, um, either depression or just like they're um, often experiencing um, low mood related to specific um, en encounters in their life. And so I, in talking with them, they have shared that they have a very specific playlist that they listen to whenever they are feeling that way. And so what I want to do is kind of take a look at that playlist with them in a session and see if I can kind of rearrange um, that playlist that they listen to in order to help get them to a um, a different mood state. And so I found this um, playlist on Spotify the other day and I'm loving it for my demonstration. So I'm gonna go to manage playlist sources. And I found this playlist, sad music for crying hours and depressing times. So I feel like that um, really hits the spot on this example kind of goal scenario. And so I selected this playlist, assuming it's my theoretical client's playlist. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new playlist. So this is the unconference test. I have to say, Erin, that that just technique of doing two things at the same time was masterful. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> it was brilliant. I could not have done that. I was desperate to kind of jump in and say something, but that was fantastic. It's a music Thanks, therapist Russell. at work, Russ. Yeah. Wow. It was just incredible to watch. I can't do that. So anyway. what we see, what we see here now is that I have my playlist builder um, graph that has popped up. And so I'm gonna take my client's playlist and I'm gonna select it. And in this current version, um, that playlist does not auto-populate, um, although that is a feature we are working on. And so I'm looking at two um, different attributes on our graph. Um, we're kind of measuring energy as well as valence. And these are attributes that um, come from Spotify. And um, valence, if you're not familiar with that, um, measures um, the, the musical positiveness or negative um, sentiment. Um, and so if I am working with my client and they've identified being in that low mood state. I'm going to, you know, we're, we're talking together about this and let's say that they're kind of in a low energy, low musical valence state. And so I clicked on the graph and what happened was the first five songs on this sad music for crying times playlist came up and that's where I'm going to start this playlist because I want to you know, utilize the ISO principle and validate where they're at. And so I can look at additional attribute information down here. I can hit play and this will play through my Spotify. Um, you'll see I was listening to Patsy Klein earlier today. Um, and I'm going to start here and I'm just going to hit add. And what comes up is that first song on my, my track. And so I'm going to keep kind of clicking around, finding a few related 
songs down here. And I'm just gonna create a very slow um, progression. Um, I'm, you know, I chose to focus on energy for this particular client, just kind of slowly moving them in energy. Um, the valence, the musical valence is not changing quite that drastically, um, but just for the purpose of kind of showing you, um, this is the, the line that I feel like is most therapeutically appropriate for this particular client. And let's say um, seven or eight songs is, oh, you'll see <laughs> nothing else on this playlist is super high energy except for this song over here. We'll say that seven songs is a good amount of time for this client. If I come over here, I have my seven songs. It's about 24 minutes in length. And what um, I can do is hit share playlist. I have a link that I can copy and send to them. But what also comes up um, is that song, that playlist within my own Spotify as well. And I can listen to it here. So I have a few more features to kind of show you. So that is our first version of Isofy. We actually have created our second version, um, which has significantly more advanced features that I really want to highlight. So this is a screenshot of that um, version of the, of the app. And what you'll notice is that we ha now have advanced features. And so the main things that I can do is actually change what I'm measuring on the X and Y axes. Um, you know, I can shift those around, but particularly I wanna highlight that Isofy has developed an attribute that Spotify does not have. And that is the lyrical valence where we are measuring um, the sentiment analysis of the lyrics and whether or not the lyrics are coming across as positive or negative. We also can include or exclude key words or phrases. And we think this is a particularly important um, if we are trying to avoid any kind of trigger words or trigger tracks for a client. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's worth saying at this point as well, regarding that, that the, <clears throat> the, the, the lyrics component doesn't come from Spotify. So we developed a partnership arrangement with Lyric, with, with Lyric Find, who kind of along with Music Match are probably like the world's largest sort of lyrics uh, provider. Um, and we have access to their, uh, we've got, uh, we've got a, uh, access to their private API. So we can interrogate, uh, we match the songs in their lyrics um, database. Uh, with the songs in Spotify using the ISRC number, which is essentially the International Recording Standard Code, I believe. Um, I don't know exactly something like that. Um, um, so once we've matched the lyrics, and this all happens in milliseconds, once you've matched the lyrics, then we have a routine where we run sentiment analysis across the lyric set that then determines the um, whether the lyrics are kind of overwhelmingly positive or negative. So with the Spotify valence attribute, that only is determining whether the whether the tune sounds happy or, or sounds positive or sounds sad. But as we all know, you know, those ideas can be inverted. You know, you take, I mean, there are some quite famous tracks that sound really quite somber um, that actually have very positive sentiment and vice versa. There are some tracks that sound very, you know, upbeat and positive, but actually if you listen to the lyrics, it's quite negative content. So, um, that was what I wanted to inject there. Yeah, carry on, Erin. So we also have um, kind of a, a companion app that is meant to be more of uh, like what the client would see where, um, and this is kind of those wireframes for um, what they might be able to see, um, how they might be able to journal about um, the specific tracks that they are listening to. And so, where we're at right now um, is that we have essentially launched the first version of our app, the ISO One Therapist Playlist Creator. We are in the stages of inviting music therapists to trial ISOFI within their work. Um, we are also developing our music listening protocol, um, really eager to continue to receive feedback from the music therapy community about um, about ISOFI, how we can continue to develop it and have it be a practical application within the therapist community. 
Um, and iSophia will continue to develop and build my machine learning models um, so that we can continue to have it be an even more effective app. And future goals um, include, you know, launching our, um, our additional version of iSophia that would be a lot more um, client facing or, or even public facing. That would be more of a self-guided experience, um, again, targeted at Gen Z. Um, we are also, um, and, and with that, I should say, um, the goal of that would be to help people be able to make healthier music choices and they could have optional support from music therapists. Um, and there's also sign point, point sign posting for those who might be um, experiencing a mental health crisis. Yeah. Um, continuing to you know, work on the companion app um, and ultimately engaging with the music industry, um, having collaborations with high profile musicians. Um, we have a number of partnerships underway at the moment um, with a few different organizations. Um, and I'm gonna name drop, including Nordoff Robbins um, in the UK, as well as the British Association for Music Therapy. Um, and so we just continue to push forward and I, realized that we're very low on time, but if anybody has questions, I'm happy to try to answer that very quickly. Um, and I also have our contact information that we can share um, for anybody who wants I, to reach out in the future. I, I just want to say a couple, a couple of quick things before before questions um, is that, you know, so that the, it's very important to, to, to say that the companion app, the second, ver the second version is very much like that. It will always be a companion app to our first release. Um, to, to, to the ISO one, it's it's not designed to directly help. Um, uh, uh, it's not. It doesn't do the same job as ISO as, as as ISO one. So it simply gives some guidance about where a person might be ruminating or and that sort of thing. Doesn't make any track recommendations or anything like that uh, at this stage. It just enables young people in particular to interrogate their playlists and see how they're listening to music and see if they can make any changes and then if they do, and then if they do decide to engage with the music therapist then it's um uh, it, it opens out as a proper companion app for 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 iso one and just kind of like in terms of the you know, I know i know Aaron Aaron mentioned order robbins and um british associates Music, music therapy we're really excited about that that we're they're in quite advanced stages now so um Nordoff robbins have essentially agreed to include it as part of their cpd program um so they're quite interested to bring it on with their therapists um, and the british association for music therapy um i mean there's a, a i think there's about 800 music therapists in the uk they're they're extremely keen and eager and interested to get this going and to endorse it so we've got and we've got a couple of discuss we've we've got we just had a very positive conversation this year uh, this week actually with sony music uh, so sony music have agreed to adopt it uh, for their employees actually um and also potentially to provide some support for artists so we've got some really exciting and interesting things we, my, my aim is to raise the profile of what you guys all do and to try and provide you some really useful tools you know and Erin has been fantastic in this she's been absolutely brilliant from the beginning so thank you Erin. Thanks Russell well here's our contact information please feel free to reach out at any point with questions concerns um, feedback any of the like we are happy to hear it. Mm -hmm.